Do you focus on progress or perfection? If it's the latter, it could be impacting your well-being. This is a Healthier Michigan podcast, episode 165, and coming up, we discuss how to overcome perfectionism. Welcome to a Healthier Michigan podcast. It's a podcast dedicated to navigating how we can improve our health and well-being through small healthy habits that we can start right now. I'm your host, Chuck Gatica, and every other week we'll sit down with a certified expert and we discuss topics that cover nutrition, fitness, and a lot more. And on this episode, we're taking a dive into the deep end of the pool on how we can identify or not uh, with perfectionism, and then how can we overcome it if it's an issue. With me today is Manager of Behavioral Health and Strategy and Planning for Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan, Sydney Lipsy. Good to see you again. It's nice to see you. Thanks for having me back. Oh, sure thing. And you know, uh, I think this may be the first time I ever want to quote a, a well-known name but uh, of this era, Voltaire. He has a great quote. Voltaire says, perfect is the enemy of good. And I suspect that could be the case for a lot of people. You know, for those that strive for perfection, uh, they might be setting up for good enough and say that's easier said than done in their life. Accepting anything less might feel like failure, right? I mean, I think that if the bar is really high for a lot of us, then we kind of think every day it could be a failure, maybe. And if we constantly see imperfections as unacceptable, then I guess a grand question is how does that impact our well-being? So do you relate to any of this idea of being perfect? Yeah, this is actually something that I've dealt with in my professional life because I have very, very high standards and I want to make sure that when I'm turning in a report or a presentation, that it's the best presentation or the best project that I can provide. So essentially that it's perfect, but it can, it does have pitfalls because nothing is perfect. So you're constantly striding for something that isn't exactly there. And I think recognizing that for me was the first step, but it can be very hard to recognize. So how do you recognize that in yourself? And then I want to double back to this because I've got another question, but how do you recognize it in yourself? Do you start to feel any angst? Do you just see that it's taking you longer to get every I dotted and T crossed? How does that work out? Yeah. So I think some of the things too are identifying the signs of being a perfectionist and they're, they're not, some of them aren't necessarily what you would think of. So some of them are, you know, you, you're you a perfectionist in all things, in all areas. So you want everything to be perfect everywhere. But some of the lesser known or some of the less obvious ones are really being all or nothing with something. You're all in or you really don't want anything to do with it. And I think this, this one kind of makes sense. This one makes sense to me because if you're all in, you're going to try to make it perfect. But if you can't, then it's it's like why even try some of the other things too are being you know very critical of yourself and others being a procrastinator or even feeling defensive when others provide feedback to things you know and craving approval wanting to make sure that people are receptive to what you're providing and that they're approving of it so those are are some of the signs too that might not be as obvious to being a perfectionist and isn't there a fine line in there? I mean, you're you're setting a high bar for submitting a report, let's say. And I would suspect that in, you know, your vocational life, your your jobs, and even in your hobbies, that being a perfectionist, you know, if you're a skydiver, you know, or you're an instructor that wants to teach me how to jump out of an airplane, I would hope you're pretty close to perfect, right? So I mean, there are things where those kinds of traits probably come in very handy too. Definitely. And I think any position or any vocation that's really detail oriented, you know, accounting or engineering, those are, are areas where I think you could see more of this because there are so many details that are involved with that. So let's talk about that idea that you are uh, leaning into perfectionism. You've even recognized it. So you maybe are setting the bar high for yourself and which could be setting yourself up for recurring failure or at least a diminished effect, right? You're not quite getting there. But then you're also looking at others, your children, your spouse, your the world around you. And you're saying, well, that 
you know, they just don't mow the grass like I could. Right. So, you know, I mean, we, we see that in our daily lives a little bit in each of us and then probably in others around us. How, how does that feeling, though, manifest? If you're not saying it out loud, how do you start to feel emotionally or mentally and how can that impact your health? Yeah, so it, it can definitely cause stress. That's, I think, typically where it can start. It can also lead to burnout, anxiety, depression. It can also lead to, you know, some low self-esteem, lots of frustration, and those can spill over into other areas of your life too. So then it, it becomes, it's not isolated to only the thing that you are trying to have perfect. And that's interesting when you talk about depression. You would think that if you're shooting for perfectionism, I guess for, this is probably just me. I, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm conjuring up in my mind, you know, this image of somebody who's constantly in the mirror being perfect. Their yeah. perfection leads to egotism, you know. So I'm thinking, well, it goes the other way. You're saying that it can actually start to take you in a negative route because you aren't achieving those levels that you've kind of set the bar for, right? Yeah. Right. Or you've set the level so high that you can't, and you can't achieve it. So it doesn't matter how long you're spending in the mirror, you know, primping and things like that. It, it just becomes an unobtainable in your mind. There's probably a, a balance there, right? Being perfect every once in a while in, in your report and then going home and saying, well, I did my best today with the kids. It's okay. You know, I suspect that that leads to more healthfulness where you're, you're not maybe obsessing. Is that a good word that we should try to be avoiding in our lives? We're not obsessing with perfectionism. Yeah. And I think that there's, there are some ways to, to get around or some ways to deal with it when you are, when you do notice those perfectionist tendencies, there are some ways to mitigate those. And like I said, the first one is really identifying what you want to be perfect and trying to see, is there a root cause behind that? You know, do I just want approval from the people that I'm providing a report from? Do I want to impress them? Do I just want to show myself that I can do it? And maybe kind of peeling back the layers of that onion to see if you can figure out what is driving that perfectionism. That's one way to start it. Looking at the bigger picture too is also a way to kind of mitigate those to say, okay, so if I turn in a report and it's it's perfect in the bigger picture, how does that really impact? How does that impact my performance at work? How does that impact the company's performance? How does that impact our relationship with the customer that we are providing the report to and things like that? So sometimes those looking at that can can help you realize that maybe it doesn't have to be perfect. Maybe good is where it can be. Yeah, good is good enough, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you find in your in your history with people or people even anecdotally around you, mm -hmm. um, it would seem to be a dangerous combination that you're leaning into perfectionism and you're not self-aware, right? That you're leaning into it and you're trying to impress the boss with reports one after another, but you have nobody speaking truth you know, or you're not going to anybody and saying, "Hey, can, can you just let me know? Am I am I, you know, being too much of a nitpicker on this? Because if you're not self-aware already, maybe it is a good idea to reach out to somebody and just ask them for a little advice or something. And even just a check in too. And if it's if it's something at work, even just checking in with the person with your team or your your boss to ask, how are things going? Is there is there anything that I'm focusing too much on? Is there anything that I should be focusing more on? And just kind of shifting your perspective with things like that. You talked about this idea of um, mental health and well-being. So when, you're, when your perfectionism begins to affect you and you led to some of the outcomes, you know, depression or anxiety, how would you start to feel? Does that manifest itself physically too? Like if I'm getting anxious and I can't really figure out why, is that a good place to kind of check yourself and say, well, what's going on with me? What's happening? Yeah. And it's, I think it's different for everyone because stress, you know, affects everyone differently. So for some people, they may feel more anxious and for, for them, anxiety might feel like butterflies in their stomach or heart racing, not being able to sit still for others. It could be racing thoughts, things like that. For other people, stress impacts them in a way where maybe it's not anxiety, but it still is more of a physical manifestation. So it could be aches and pains, headaches, things like that. So I think being aware of how stress affects your body, how it affects you personally can be a big indicator too of how how to identify when you're in those stressful times and, and just take note of that. 
So when you start to think about this idea, are there other uh, avenues for perfectionism we haven't touched on that maybe wouldn't even be apparent to us? Let me think about that one for a second. So I think... um, I'll give you an example in my life. Yeah. So I'm out power washing the bricks as you walk up the front of the house because it's time. You know, they're just kind of getting grungy and there's stuff in the cracks. And I thought, oh, I'll get out the little power washer. So I do that and I get down to where it hits the sidewalk, the public sidewalk. And I look at the sidewalk and I'm like, well, that looks kind of grungy in front of my house. I'll just power wash the sidewalk. Now, nobody is going to see that from the street. Nobody's going to say, man, they've got the brightest sidewalk in the world. But for me, I'm, and I guess this kind of falls into that category, it doesn't matter. I'm not, I'm not going to eat off the sidewalk. Nobody's going to crawl on it. So I just do it, and I forget about it. And uh, yesterday, day before, our daughter-in-law, who's in with my son, our son, and our grandson took him for a walk in the stroller. She comes back and she says, you know, I just walked over the, your sidewalk. I can really tell a difference. And I'm thinking, okay, see, you know, <laughs> that was it. But I wasn't really aching for that. And right. yet it felt good that I got a response. So, you know, to me, that's more of a normal reaction on the back end. Now, on the front end, people may say, what do you mean you power washed your sidewalk? It's like, you know, it took me half an hour. It's I got the gizmo. It's no big deal. So I do relate to some of this, but it never gives me angst, per se. Maybe it does take up a little of my time, I guess, you know. Yeah. And I think that there was an important distinction there, too, for you, is that it's not something that you were focusing on of because I, I wash this, I have to wash the sidewalk as well, you know, in making, making it all match essentially. So that if, if the fence is clean, the sidewalk is clean. But I think where, where it starts to shift over into more problematic is when it is starting to have those manifestations where, you know, you're staying up late to work on reports, you're staying up late to work on papers, even though it's already been done, you're trying to make it better. You're trying to make it perfect. You know, you're not eating, you're missing meals, you're not sleeping, or you're not taking care of yourself. So you're, you're skipping your normal day-to-day hygiene activities and things like that. So if it starts to shift into that, that's where I think it becomes a little more problematic for your own life. I was not power washing at midnight after right. way after sunset. So I'll just say that for the record, Sydney, you know. So uh, if we now are recognizing even little bits of what you're talking about in ourselves, what are the ways that we can overcome this perfectionism? Even if it's something as simple as breathing deeply, you know, uh, we, we talk a lot in this podcast about self-care, you know, mindfulness, finding time to sit and relax. So, I mean, some of that seems like it can also weave its way into this idea too, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I think, I think there are, there are several things. So there are some things that you can do on your own and see if those are successful. And there's also ways uh, that cognitive behavioral therapy can help as well. You can start off with looking at things like recognizing your successes, recognizing what you've achieved so far throughout the process or throughout the project. And I think that's one area that a lot of us overlook is is celebrating those successes along the way. Deep breathing is another one. If when you notice that stress starting to manifest in your body, just taking a step back, taking a few deep breaths, bringing the heart rate back down and just kind of recentering is another way to do it. But cognitive behavioral therapy is if it starts to shift into that area where you are staying up late, you are skipping meals because you're focused so much on this one area that you're forgetting about the other things. Um, that's something that can can help as well. And what is that when you say cognitive behavioral therapy? What, what is that? Cognitive behavioral therapy is, is a form of um, psychotherapy or talk therapy where they focus on the relationship between your thoughts your actions, and your behaviors. So it focuses truly on shifting your thought process and helping you identify how your thought process is interacting with your day-to-day life and how you're getting those outcomes just based on how your thoughts can lead to different actions, which can lead to different outcomes, and it can, can kind of cycle that way. So it really focuses on shifting your thought pattern. So instead of shifting to say, I need this paper to be perfect, you can start to shift your thought patterns to say, I know the criteria that needs to be included. Let's make sure all of that's included in in the paper or in the report that I'm providing. So then it goes from having it be perfect to having it meet the standards. 
Yeah, that's interesting. And you know, when I mentioned having self-awareness, I wasn't being hypercritical of anybody that may not, but I I, I think this behavioral therapy would be a, a way of looking at a person you can talk to because maybe you don't have anyone else who is there to speak truth or you don't feel confident enough to get their input. So for many, I would su- I would suspect this is pretty powerful, this therapy. It's a very, very effective modality of therapy. When you have someone who is trained in cognitive behavioral therapy, they can work through those sessions in that process with you. There's lots of other materials too that they might give you like workbooks or handouts and things to help you learn the process and focus on the process. You know, you said something else, and then I want to wrap it up, but you said something about, you know, um, almost like uh, creating, uh, in my mind, I was thinking little check marks of when I became my new version of perfect. Not perfect, but better. And I suspect for some people who are living a life where they feel like, well, I'm procrastinating, I can't get things done, to put a little check mark on a calendar to physically see that you have done some things to a new level of perfect, uh, better, uh, to give you some wins that may be a very healthful thing. That may not be a bad thing. I completely agree. I think that that's, again, celebrating those little successes along the way and and taking a step back to see the progress that you've made. Well, we've had a lot of success here. I mean, a lot of great stuff. Do you have any takeaways you want to leave for the audience, Sydney? Yeah, I think the the biggest thing that I would say is, um, and Chuck, you actually brought it up, is that being wanting to have things um, a particular way doesn't necessarily mean you're a perfectionist. So if you want to power wash the sidewalk, as long as it's not impacting (laughs) your life in a negative way. I'm not out in the thunder and lightning (laughs) after midnight. Yeah, that's a problem. Yeah. Yeah. But (laughs) if if those things aren't impacting your life in a negative way and it's making you happy, by all means, carry on. But if if you are starting to notice, um, you know, your those knots in your stomach when you're trying to work on things, or you're procrastinating because you just don't know how to how to do something the right way, or things like that, those might be times to kind of say maybe this is something that I do need to to look at into and check in there. So just just those first steps. Well, it's great to see you. Thanks for all the wisdom. It was great seeing you again. Thanks so much. Oh, sure thing. With us today is the manager of behavioral health, strategy, and planning for Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan, Sydney Lipsy. We're glad you've been with us. Thanks for listening to a Healthier Michigan podcast. It's brought to you by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan. If you like the show, you want to know more, you can check out our new refreshed website at ahealthiermichigan.org slash podcast. You can leave us reviews or ratings on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. We've got a YouTube channel. You get all the new episodes, old episodes. Take them with you on your smartphone or tablet. And be sure to subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcast app. I'm Chuck Gatica. Be well.